If you have ever researched Bitcoin, you have likely come across the world's greatest unsolved financial mystery, Satoshi Nakamoto, the anonymous internet profile that is supposedly behind the invention of Bitcoin. In today's video, we answer all the important questions. Who is Satoshi and what do the mysterious origins reveal about Bitcoin's future? If you have ever googled Satoshi Nakamoto, you have likely come across this controversial YouTube video titled Bitcoin, Unmasking Satoshi. This video with just over 640,000 views is an absolute must watch if you plan on investing a dollar into Bitcoin. After nearly a month of research, I can finally answer the question, who invented Bitcoin and what do its origins reveal about its future? By revealing who the founder is, we get a glimpse of what the cryptocurrency is all about. The results will shock you. We also look into the possibility of Bitcoin being the largest Ponzi scheme ever created, summarizing the documentary I mentioned earlier into a smaller 12 minute video. What we discover should be enough to convince you that Bitcoin is one giant piece of fraud. Before we start, however, I want to warn you, please, for the next eight minutes, try to keep an open mind while watching this. What I've recognized over the last few months is that the Bitcoin community is extremely harsh, refusing to look at the cryptocurrency from any other side but the positive one. If it's not bullish news, they don't want to hear it. So if you're one of those people, I expect I'm going to see a large drop in engagement at exactly this point. If you're willing to hear another opinion that looks at BTC from an unbiased lens, then give me a chance to explain before you click off and begin rage commenting. To begin, we start at the origins because it's here where the clues leading to Bitcoin's foundations are exposed. Bitcoin was created in 2009 by a man who went by Satoshi Nakamoto. Nobody knows who this man is, even all these years later. The original white paper was genius, essentially a founding document that explains Bitcoin in detail. Many people have looked at this almost biblical paper and searched it up and down for clues that could point to Satoshi's true identity, which would expose a lot of the details regarding the real purpose of the cryptocurrency. Right now, part of the appeal of Bitcoin is that the founder is unknown, creating an almost religious-like community where speculation and mystery form an ideological connection to the coin. Revealing who the founder is will unmask this mystery and change the dynamics. Many people think of Bitcoin as sort of a counterculture against central banking governments. They see whoever invented it as a messiah of sorts. What we know about the founder is hidden in this text. For one, Satoshi's writing style had signs of academia splashed all over it, double spaces ending each period, and perfect use of the English language and vocabulary. The number one feature, however, was the consistent use of British English, using terms like color and bloody difficult. Then we have these simple conclusions that we can draw from within the sheer complexity of the document. We know that whomever invented Bitcoin needed to be an expert in C++ programming, cryptography, and economics. Although the idea of internet money may seem simple, Bitcoin is a rather complex invention, needing a wide array of features to ensure its security, practicality, and functionality. The idea of using cryptography as a base to create a currency or anonymous payment system is truly not a new one. The origins of such an idea stem back to the late 80s, and even looking over Satoshi's references in the white paper, you can see dozens of individuals who laid the groundwork necessary for Bitcoin to be built upon. Before I continue, I want you to understand that this is where we see a split in opinions. For one, you can take these pieces of evidence and build upon them to narrow down the true origins of Bitcoin, or you can choose to believe that they're all traps and that the true origin of Bitcoin is much deeper, being built by a group of people, or even a government organization like the NSA. But before you go down that rabbit hole, I encourage you to watch Barely Sociable's part 1 video on the origins. I don't have enough time in this video to explain why this is very likely not the case. It's much more likely that Bitcoin was indeed built by one person and then further enhanced by a small group of developers within a rather obscure corner of the internet back in 2009. So why would the founder remain anonymous? This is especially confusing since many of the early developers are well known and even give public speeches to this day. Well, there is direct evidence to support the fact that Satoshi was extremely concerned for his security. This was a high IQ individual who understood the power of what he was building. Bitcoin in its early days, and to some degree even today, is widely used to finance criminal activities. It's no secret that when hackers raid your servers and take your data hostage, they ask for payment via Bitcoin. 
The cryptocurrency is founded upon privacy and with that comes positives and negatives. If I'm accepting or demanding payments for hostages, drugs, or hacks, you can bet that I'm sending you my Bitcoin address and not my rounding number. Untraceable payments were used to fund organizations like WikiLeaks and this obviously raised some eyebrows in Virginia and DC from, well, certain organizations who were not too pleased with some of the revelations. If you for a second think that the government will just sit there and watch an anonymous payment system emerge from the ashes and do nothing about it, you just don't understand superpowers. They crave control and more importantly taxes. And as you may know from The Wire, following the money is the key to nearly everything. So where am I going with this? How did the Bitcoin founder get around this government regulation? And how did Bitcoin prosper avoiding lawmakers? Did he form protests? Did he go on a media crusade? No, he did the one thing that's actually effective in getting laws and regulations altered. He bribed or lobbied for it. It's no coincidence that when Bitcoin began jumping in popularity in 2013 and 2014, an organization called the Bitcoin Foundation paid Falcon Global Capital to lobby and work with regulators in helping accept cryptocurrency as a legitimate form of payment. This should be our first clue. Now let me tell you something that may upset a lot of Bitcoin owners. When I say accept cryptocurrency as a legitimate form of payment, what I really mean is track tax and regulate every single aspect of the coin. While many still believe that Bitcoin is this wild west anonymous untraceable payment system, I'll explain why this is far from the truth. Paying someone anonymously via Bitcoin in the United States is currently nearly impossible. Just Google, is it possible for the government to track a Bitcoin transaction? And while you may end up on a list, you can read about just how difficult it really is. For an example, many users have figured out that if you use something called mixers, or website services that let you conceal your identity by mixing your BTC coins with other users in order to preserve privacy, you can actually make it extremely difficult to track your transactions. Genius, right? Well, here is what happens when you run one of these services. Yep, that's right. The U.S. Treasury comes after you and charges you under the Bank Secrecy Act. Now we're getting somewhere. It's not a surprise that Bitcoin is outlawed or heavily restricted in Iran, China, North Korea, and all other countries anti-West. This, in my opinion, is also not a coincidence. Even major billionaires who support the coin to this day never make references to it becoming decentralized or pseudo-anonymous. Instead, they focus on other aspects of the coin that move away from many of the positives rooted in the very foundations of using cryptography as a base for currency. If you have watched the Barely Sociable documentary, you know that, spoiler alert, the founder of Bitcoin is likely Blockstream CEO Adam Beck. Not what you would expect from a messiah. Now, I'm not going to get super deep on this, just watch the video for yourself if you doubt this claim. Adam is a man who is interested in mostly profits. You'll see what I mean next. Adam fits every single criteria in regards to the origin story. A quick rundown shows the following. He for one is British and is an academic, an expert in payment systems, C++ programming, and cryptography. Part of an early group of experts called the Cypherpunks, Adam displayed he had knowledge to build something like Bitcoin in 1998. You can read that message here and it features that double spacing after periods. If you watch the documentary, there's even more numerous insignificantly small pieces of circumstantial evidence that add up. Beck's initial posting on BitcoinTalk.org revealed familiarity with obscure bug fixes during the early development. And while he had a busy academic career, he had a significant gap around the time when Bitcoin was being developed. Of course, all of this is still not enough to 100% prove it was him. The only way we could get that is if the founder provided cryptographic proof which is also something discussed in the documentary. Adam Beck could always just go with plausible deniability, and that's exactly what he did on Twitter following some of the outrage after the documentary went live. It's actually really surprising to me that the YouTube video didn't get more attention. It reveals something big, a monster story in finance that is largely being looked over. There is no doubt in my mind that this guy is 100% behind Bitcoin, and I would not be surprised that he was also involved or previously contracted for someone like the GCHQ, essentially the British NSA. Now before you click off and call me a conspiracy theorist, give me a chance. I'm not just saying this out of nowhere. Bitcoin's roots are deeply engraved in cryptography. It's no surprise that early Bitcoin developer Gavin Anderson 
was invited to address the CIA in 2011 in an all-expensive paid presentation that just goes to show that intelligence agencies had an interest very, very early. Snowden's leaks confirmed this. Turns out that the NSA had poured millions into a program called Money Rocket, which helped track down senders and receivers of Bitcoin right around 2013. This all ties into the X Keyscore program, essentially allowing the NSA to track and catalog extensive information regarding Bitcoin users. What this all condenses down into is the fact that Bitcoin isn't exactly as advertised. And while I'm really not sure if these facts will make any sort of impact on the short-term success of the cryptocurrency, I do believe that Bitcoin will not emerge as this truly decentralized coin that society will use as a way to remove the shackles of the monetary system and avoid government control. Instead, it will actually enhance control and give even more power to those in charge as every single transaction within the Bitcoin network is recorded and logged forever. The idea that Adam Beck found the Bitcoin as sort of a Robin Hood character couldn't be further from the truth. He actually moved from the UK to Malta right around the time when Bitcoin broke the $10,000 mark. Interesting considering Malta is a well-known tax haven within the European Union. Bitcoin can be considered as an alternative form to store money, but this idea that it's somehow an anonymous payment system intended to compete with the US dollar and other major currencies is laughable. There is no denying that the coin gained popularity as a speculative investment, eventually going mainstream and gathering the support of a few big fish. Nowadays, I truly think the big guys are working it up before selling in a massive wealth transfer that will once again go to the top 1% with some dollars left over for the few that wrote it up. If you sit there and think about it, Bitcoin's entire premise was that it would change the world, and investors claim it's finite in supply. Both things are untrue. If our theory is correct, Bitcoin is a largely commercial venture intended for profit. It isn't anonymous. And if you consider competing cryptocurrencies, which will surely improve upon Bitcoin as additional supply, then it isn't finite either. After months of research, I can finally say that I'm out of BTC completely, largely disappointed. Thank you guys for watching and please make sure you hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed.